Under the course of the people's fights, as sometimes the animals are caught in the chain and it ends up causing either or separation or death. His baby was found just lying down all along without a sign of other elephant left to her. That's why the rain is productive as well. When she came to the nursery, we discovered that both her high legs were paralyzed. Not only dragged them on the ground. We could not tell what had caused the paralysis, and so we had to give her some time. And after months, she started to make some little steps. And since then, until now, it's getting stronger every day. Behind Kerio is an elephant with the name Kitty, who is about a year old. Res rescued from Kitty Club, which is found in Saburu, also a starvation victim due to drought. Taking water next to me is Mawin, who is approximately about two years old, who was rescued from the deep the next to me, and he was brought up close to me. Walking along the line at the far end is an elephant with the name Mukutan at the corner now, who is one and a half years. And Mukutan was rescued from the deep of the a victim of human water problems. He was found in a community farm in a base plantation without the rest of the family members. It is believed that the rest of the herd might have gone into people's farm to feed on the crops. The owners came out to chase them away. Out. And during that process of chasing them away and running up and down, he might have lost direction from the rest of the family members and was discovered two days later on. By the time it was discovered, nobody knew where the mother was or where the rest of the family members were. Exactly. That's why we were conducted to have rescue because an elephant at that size and age could not have survived without food and without the mother's milk and without protection against other dangers. The big one right over here is an elephant with the name Ziwadi, who is three years old. Was rescued from the mother. That's true. Was identified all alone. Ziwadi Kerio. By them. So when she came in the nursery, we discovered that she was epileptic and she used to have frequent seizures. And so we had to put her on medication, which has really helped. The seizures have not gone completely. But the frequency has totally reduced. She used to have several seizures. Now she's having one seizure after several months, which means she's on the right path of healing. We are hoping, praying that by the time you are ready to go back in the world, we will also be well. And lastly, right in front, the last one, an elephant with the name Shiga, rescued from Java conservation area, found stuck in a water hole. We do have these water holes that are being used by animals to get water during the dry season. And because of the long period of drought, the water holes themselves have dried as well. So this baby was found stuck in this little sticky mud that was left after the water hole had dried and the baby all alone. So that's why we rescued him. Right now he's about 11 months old. That makes the first group of 18 elephants. In a few minutes, they will walk away so that we can get in another group of 12 slightly older than what you can see now. And generally, Different reasons have caused all these babies to be left orphans. The human water conflict is the first major reason that is causing most of them to be left orphans. The human water conflict is a big problem in our country. 
So this is a problem because there is always an increase in the population of human beings compared to the space, the size of land. And this has caused human beings to occupy in most of the long wild animals. So that is why human beings are fighting for space and water with wild animals, causing conflicts every now and then. And that is why the migratory routes of wild animals no longer exist. And people are doing farming, building structures, and doing lots of development in these areas. And if the animals try to go from one area to another, they can't do it. They will encounter the crops, the structures, the road, the development. The owners will want to fight them. During that process, they might lose direction from the rest of the family members or the mother find a big kid and the baby is alone. If the baby is found all alone, Nobody knows where the mother is. Then we are conducted and have to fly out immediately to go and help rescue them from wherever part of the country that they will have been identified. And that is why human wildlife conflict is the first major reason that is forcing most of these babies to be that open and therefore brought in that. I'm reporting is another reason that has caused a few of them. And I say a few of them because for the last three years the trend of poaching in Kenya has dropped, which is a good sign. We we hope, pray, and believe that the drop continues until there will be no poaching in the long run. But unfortunately, a few of them came in because the mothers were killed and the tasks were taken off of them. And I say unfortunately because the act of poaching is being perfected by we human beings. And it is unfortunate because it is our role as human beings to care and protect these animals. As human beings, we fail in our role by causing them to be left open just because we are interested in their ivory. And an elephant ivory adds no value to human life. And so that is why I'd like to ask all of you who are here today you to help stop poaching. Uh, you can help stop poaching. <laughs> this is right from your home for you to, and right from your family. Yeah. Yeah. Nice to say it this because the end product of my room are being sold from all over the world. So right from your home, you can help make a change by ensuring that you don't buy anything that comes from my way or from the right horn. By ensuring that you spread the word on your friends and other things that you need. Don't buy anything that comes from my way or from the right horn. The quick all these that. Well, I mean, so under the point, the ones who don't have a market won't see the need to continue to live in Alaska because they don't have a village to sell the diamond. Which means the population of Alaska is going to be big. We will really be great. And so that is why our reporting is one of the reasons that I suppose a few of them to be left open and they are promoting the Some of the babies were found falling down wells, falling down mangroves, weren't stuck in the mud, washed down the rivers during the heavy rainfalls. The mothers would know here to come and rescue them. Very few of them are often from natural reasons, and natural reasons are made. The mothers have died from old age, from natural diseases, and from starvation back in the world. But the majority of them, their reasons for being orphans are human related in one way or the other. And that is why it is important that as human beings, we have to come in and make sure that we give them a second chance to survive back in the world. Otherwise, without them being identified and being rescued, it means. Father, you can see here now what I'm dying, which means the four village mountains will be going down every night. And in a very, very near future, we will end up having lost all these animals. In addition to taking care of the baby elephants and rhinos, the Sheldrick Wild and Fast will go to other projects that we undertake. For example, we have got mobile veterinary units. This mob of ethno units will go on the path looking for natural indigenous animals and taking them to just as you can see to continue the organic life. This is not necessarily on elephants and rhinos alone. It is with any other wild animals that have been found out there with any health problems. 
once identified, we are conducted in a more professional unit with either fly or drive to the scene. To go and help break the injured animals in the media, certain prey to continue the all night life after treatment. We also have anti poaching teams. So these teams are mostly based on Sabo. So we'll go around the path looking for snares. The, the snares are the traps that are set in the path, especially by the poachers, and sometimes by the community in the neighboring areas to get hold of these other type animals who get meat or for skin. So anti poaching teams make sure that they can promote the snares for the path. We we'll also have driver with the people that are buying the path for the park to ensure that the path is kept to be accepted for all white Our anti coaching teams will also work together with a K9 unit, whereby in case the signs of coaches identified, our sniffer dogs will assist and make sure that the coaches are cool. Our anti coaching teams will work together with our area surveillance whereby we do have the plane to fly the air patrolling along the conservation areas. In case that any illegality is taking place in any area, then our aerial surveillance will be able to notify the Kenya Wildlife Service agents and our teams on the ground who will make a follow find out what is happening and help correct the illegality. And lastly, we do have a community project. And our community project is based on the